Welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Founded in 1938, Bible Tracks seeks to take the gospel to all the world. Our teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. For more information about Bible Tracks, go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. And now our teacher, Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Friday edition here for Bible Track Echoes. Thank you so very much for joining us. I hope your week has been going well. I hope along the way this week that you have stopped each and every day to spend your own personal time in reading the Word of God, preparing your heart ahead of time by asking the Spirit of God to teach you the Word of God Himself. Glory to God, God has given to the church teachers and preachers and so on to help teach the Word of God. But if you know Christ as Savior, as I do, you and I are indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God. We have the label, the title of being believer priests, and God Almighty wants to teach you and I personally His Word as we are in it, praying over it, trying to rightly discern it and understand it. I hope that as a as an actuality for you. And I hope today's broadcast will encourage you in your walk in the Lord and wanting to understand the Word of God. Now, right now, my Bible is open to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5. We are doing a study through the book of Ephesians during these days. We're up to chapter 5. I'm going to begin reading at verse 18 here in a moment. If you can, reach over, pick up your own copy of the Word of God and join me there. Ephesians 5, Verses 19 and 20 will be our focus. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. I'm going to explain what that is and why I want you to have them. And we'll get to that here in just a moment. But I want to lead into our Bible study with this story. Uh, Some time ago, I read a story about an elderly man who was going into surgery on that day. And the surgery was a very serious kind, a kind in which many people do not survive. So obviously, this man was worried. Well, add to this that this elderly man had no friends with him, had no family with him. He was alone. The orderly came and was wheeling the patient in the gurney down to the surgical wing. But as he was going, the orderly began to hum the hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Oh, let me ask, how long has it been since you and your church has sung that song, Be Thou My Vision? Well, this hymn just flooded this older man's soul and encouraged him. But then again, as that song got done, he the orderly quit humming that one. He then went on to hum the song, It Is Well With My Soul. And again, no words, just humming the tune. And when they finally stopped at the door to the surgical unit, the elderly man thanked the orderly. And the orderly said, uh, oh, well, what did I do? And the man said, well, God used you today to restore my soul. How did I do that? We well, said, your humming helped me bring God back to my soul. What a great story of a man who, even unbeknownst to what he was doing, was humming the truth of God's word impacting life. Let's talk about the power of spiritual songs today. Before I read here in Ephesians 5, I want to encourage you to get gospel tracts from us. Now, that word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, gospel tracts. A gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of how a sinner can be saved from their sin and have the gift of eternal life. I want to put into your hands a sample packet which contains over 40 different gospel tracks. One of them is this one in my hand right now entitled Born Again. Born Again. The track opens this way. It says, I met a great church-going lady who had taught Sunday school and even attended Bible college, but she was not born again. And a very moral man spoke about the day he was born again. He had served his church many ways, but it was not until in his 60s he heard God's word and was saved and was born again. Oh, that term born again is 
bantered about in our day. Many people have heard it. Some people think they understand it, but many don't. Here's a great, clear gospel track challenging the person that reads it with this truth that Jesus said, ye must be born again. Get it. It's just one of the tools that will extend your personal witness for Christ. Uh, At the end of the program, my announcer will make known to you three different ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Have something to write with and be ready, please, to jot down our contact information and let you and I become partners. Get the sample packet so we can become partners in serving Christ together. All right? Well, my Bible's open here. I'm going to begin to read Ephesians 5, 18 says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just stop right there. Now, the normative for all of us who know Christ is this, that we are supposed to be walking under the control of the Holy Spirit of God. And at this very moment, let me just stop and admit that we don't do this very well, very consistently. But nonetheless, that is what is supposed to be normative based upon God's command in verse 18. Now, A chief result of you and I walking under the control of the Spirit of God will be that we will connect with fellow believers and impact fellow believers using godly music. Verse 19 says that we're going to communicate with each other using psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now, I do realize that there are some folk that say they have really got those three words all figured out with some exactness and know what the differences are between psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I, frankly, do not believe that we can be all that dogmatic about what the differences are. Let me tell you my take on those three words right now. I think the psalm word refers to pointedly to the Old Testament book of the Psalms. It was the hymn book of the Jewish people. There are churches today who still regularly sing out of the Psalms, out of the Psalter. That's the Psalms. What about the word hymns? I think hymns most likely refers to New Testament songs that praise God for who he is, praise Christ for what he has done, and what's been wrought for us through the cross of Jesus Christ. I think these hymns deal with a lot of doctrine. But then, spiritual songs are other songs that may not be so much focused on praise to God and doctrine, but they focus on how you and I are to live for God, and the songs that promote faithfulness in our lives. But again, let's be real careful about having such clear-cut definitions between those words. But here's the point. Believers are to be bolstering one another's lives through music, godly music. Now, the words there, speaking and singing in verse 19, are actually not verbs in the, in the Greek language. They are participles. Now, <laughs> if you're like me, you don't remember much about your grammar school lessons about English and so on. But participles, those are descriptive nouns. You remember the, over in Matthew 28, 19, the Great Commission passage, we're told there, go ye therefore, and many of us have read that word go like it's a challenge and a charge to be going. Well, the word go is also a participle. Simply put, going describes what you and I do. Everybody's going someplace as their normal, natural flow of life. But you and I who know Christ, in our going, we are to present the gospel according to Matthew chapter 28, 19 and 20. Here, though, we're not called goers. In Ephesians 5.19, we're called talkers. We're called singers. Okay, since we are those things, let's do those things uh, with, in a way that honors Christ and bolsters the lives of others, particularly other believers. But the Holy Spirit is not done yet in the passage. That's verse 19. In verse 20, we find that not only are we to be singers, we are also to be thanks 
giving saints, saints giving thanks to God. And yes, the word giving thanks is also a descriptive word. It's a participle. When the Holy Spirit is controlling our lives, and again, that's supposed to be the normative for us, when that is happening, it's going to be natural for us to be giving thanks to God. And what do we thank him for? Well, verse 20 says, for all things. Now, the word all means all, for all things. The apostle Paul was when he was in the jail at Philippi, he and his partner were singing and giving thanks to God. Now, giving thanks for all things. The verse also tells us when we are to be giving thanks to God. It says always for all things, giving thanks to God always. Now, Normally, when I'm going through a passage in verses like this, I give my outline. I have not done that today, so let me give you my three-word outline for today. All the words begin with the letter W. Here we go. Those are words, when, and why. Words, when, and why. By the word words, I mean this. You and I are to be known by the words that come out of our mouths. Our words are Christ-honoring. Our words talk about Jesus. Our words are also full of gratefulness to God. But not only do we direct those words of gratefulness to God, we talk about our gratefulness to God with fellow believers. And lo and behold, if we talk about our gratefulness to God before the lost, they just might be impressed with our God. What do I mean by the word when? Being under the control of the Holy Spirit means that I use the right words all the time. I talk about Christ all the time. It's always the right time to be speaking and singing praise to God. It's always the right time to be grateful to God. But then I come to the word why. Why do I use that word? In verse 19, we're told that we are to be aiming at the heart, not just our heart, but really the hearts of others. We're to be aiming at the heart. Music, so to speak, I'm going to talk about music in particular here, has the power to bypass the brain. And again, I'm using the phrase, so to speak. Music has the ability to bypass the brain and go right to the heart, right to our soul, Music can accomplish things that sometimes logical preaching of good truth cannot. You remember? Do you remember that old man in the story going into surgery? His heart was changed from worry to peace. Why? Godly music. Somebody sang to that man. Oh, you and I, we're going to meet folk today, today whose hearts are, well, they're struggling Let's speak to those hearts. Let's first, though, be honestly saying to the Spirit of God, I need to be under your control. Oh, dear friend, if you're listening today and you have never experienced what it means to be saved from your sin, you would never experienced having the cleansing power of the shed blood of Christ, here's what you need to do. Number one, you need to admit before Almighty God and yourself that you are a sinner headed to hell but also claim that Christ died and shed his blood to pay your sin debt and receive him. Do that now. Thank you for watching Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our Bible Tracts, please write us at P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702 or call us at 309-828-6888. You can also visit our website at BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.